Hello learners, welcome back to Constant Learners. In today's video, we are discussing the integrity constraints and then we will discuss the four different types of integrity constraints. Now for understanding integrity constraints, it is important that we understand what entity is and what attributes are. If you haven't watched the previous video about data models, I'm sharing the link above and also in the description box below. Please watch that video first because if those concepts are clear, then this is going to be a cup of tea for you all. Okay, now let's get started. Integrity constraints. Now, see, we know that data is supposed to be stored inside the database. But can we just dump the data anywhere in the database? No, we need to store the data. We need to store the data in a particular format, right? And this data is supposed to be related to one another. This is one of a very important aspects of storing the data inside the database that we cannot just store any random data into the database, right? So to store similar kind of data together, we need to follow some set of rules, all right? And these set of predefined rules are known as integrity constraints. So integrity constraints are nothing but a set of rules. Let's understand this with a very simple example. Here we have an entity staff, all right? In this entity staff, we have some attributes like staff ID, staff name, phone number, age and department, right? Now, when we declare these attributes, right? When we create these attributes, we need to define the constraints, the integrity constraints. Now, what could be those integrity constraints? The first one we can declare is the data type, right? We can decide what type of data can be stored in that particular attribute, right? For example, for the name attribute, we only need the alphabets, right? So we are going to declare that this attribute is only going to accept the characters. Characters means the alphabets between A to Z, right? Then if it is a phone number, we can declare that the phone number will only have integers because we know that it is only going to be a number, right? The age is also going to be integers, right? Department could be characters because it's going to be the name of the department or it could be a combination of alphabets and numbers. Staff ID could be a number, could be an alphabet, could be a combination of alphabet and numbers, right? So we are just deciding what type of data can be stored in that particular attribute, right? Second restriction or second rule that we can follow is the length of the data that is being stored in each attribute. For example, I declare that the staff ID is going to be of length 4. That is, it can store, let's say, only integers and those integers can only be uh, 4 digits in length. All right. It could be less than 4 digits or 4 digits or equal to 4 digits. We can also declare greater than or equal to 4 digits, right? So we can declare anything. That is, it could be either greater than 4 digits. It could be greater than equal to 4 digits. It could be exactly equal to only 4 digits less than or equal to four digits, right? So we can declare any of these here, right? The length of the attribute, the data stored in each attribute could be anything according to what I am declaring it to be. For example, let's say for names, I'm declaring 20 characters. That is my name is going to be either 20 characters long or less than 20 will also be acceptable. Phone number, let's say I'm declaring that it's going to be 10 digits long right? It cannot be less than 10 digits. It cannot be more than 10 digits. Age, I can declare my age to be either greater than 0 or greater than 18 or I can declare it to be a two-digit number. So I am declaring some kind of rules for my attributes, all right? These rules, these limitations or these restrictions are known as integrity constraints, right? Now, what restrictions are we imposing? We are imposing the restrictions on the type of the data that is being stored inside the database, right? And why are we doing that? To maintain the validity, integrity, and consistency of the data that is being stored inside the database. That is, we are trying to maintain the quality of the data, not just while storing the data, but also while updating or managing the data inside the database, right? Now let's quickly discuss what the integrity constraints are. There are four different types of integrity constraints, domain constraints, entity constraints, referential integrity constraints, and 
key constraints. The first one is the domain constraints. The example that we just saw comes under the domain constraint. That is, we are declaring the data type that is acceptable for a particular attribute. We're also declaring the length of the data that is allowed or that can be stored in that particular attribute, right? Then also whether the age is going to be greater than 18, greater than zero, whatever restrictions that we are putting on the attributes, okay? The restrictions that we are putting on the attributes comes under the domain constraints, all right? So whenever we are talking about imposing any restrictions on the attributes, we know that we are talking about the domain constraints. So that was domain constraints. Second type of integrity constraints is Entity integrity constraints. Now, entity integrity constraints states that every relation, relation means what? The table in the relational databases. That is, every relation must have a primary key. That is, it is mandatory. It is compulsory that every relation must have one primary key. What is a primary key? Primary key is nothing but an attribute or a column that is helping us to identify individual rows in a relation, all right? Primary key helps us to identify individual rows in a relation. How and why does it do that? See, here again, we have the entity staff. This table is about the data about staff of a company, right? Now here, this staff ID, we are declaring it to be the primary key. Let's say staff ID is starting from 100. This is 101. This is 102, right? Here, let's say the data is stored about a person named Rahul, Anjali, and Sonia. All right? Now, whenever I have to look for the data about Rahul, now this entire row is storing data about Rahul, correct? This entire row is storing data about Anjali. And this entire row is storing data about Sonia. Now, let's say I want to look for Rahul's phone number. I only need his staff ID. Why his staff ID? Because it is the primary key. Now the features of primary key is that it is always unique for every entry of data. That is none of these two primary keys or none of these two values are going to be identical. No two rows will have the same primary key, right? Primary key is always going to be unique for everyone. Unique means it's going to be different, all right? It cannot be the same for two people, right? So since it is unique, we can identify the data stored in any particular row only with the help of the primary key, right? Now, there can be two people with the same name. Let's say this is also Rahul and here also the data is about Rahul. This is about Rahul Khanna. This is about Rahul Kapoor, right? So these two people have the same first names, but the rest of the data is going to be different, right? So if we know the staff ID, the primary key of each of these Rahuls, we can look for their respective data, right? So the primary key has to be unique at all times and it cannot be null, all right? The primary key cannot be null. It has to be uh, having some kind of value, all right? Primary key has to have some kind of value. It can never be empty. We cannot leave it empty because it is the primary key. It is the identifier. That is why uh, it, entity integrity constraint states that there must be at least one column that is unique and that column is known as a primary key, all right? I hope that this was clear. Then, Third integrity constraint is referential integrity constraint. Now, referential integrity constraint connects two tables, all right? It requires two tables. One table is the parent. So, this is the parent and this other table is going to be the child, all right? Now, this child table will have its own primary key and parent table will also have its own primary key, all right? But this primary key from the parent table can be a part of this other table, that is the child table. But in this case, it is going to work as the foreign key. 
all right so the primary key of the parent table is going to be used in the child table as the foreign key this is nothing but referential integrity constraint now what are the rules for this key for for this foreign key to be present first rule is that foreign key will have the values that are available in the parent key right these values must be present in this column we cannot have any values that is not present in this column right either this column will have the values from this table or it's going to be null all right so referential integrity constraint states that foreign key will have the values that are available in the parent table in the primary key right or it's going to be null it cannot have any values that are not present in the parent key let's understand this with an example so one table is the parent and the parent key's primary key will become child table's foreign key all right now here we have the professor's table which is the parent table and the student project table is the child table all right now every student is allotted a professor to assist them in the project right now here we have the professor id let's say bhante sir's professor id is 208 sharma sir's is 209 and khan sir sir's is 210 right here rahul tina and anjali are the students they have their own student id now here this is the primary key in the professor's table professor id is the primary key in the student's table student's id is the primary key but here we have no use for this column right now we only going to use this column here and this column now if you see this is the professor id and this is also the professor id that means we are connecting these two tables with this attribute professor's id this column the professor's id in the professor's table is the primary key so the professor's id in the child table that is the project table is going to be the foreign key so this is the foreign key here right now referential integrity constraint states that this column in the child table the foreign key will either have the values from the parent table or it's going to be null all right what are the examples for that one let's say rahul has been assigned the professor khan right so here the professor id will be 210 tina has been assigned professor bante so her professor id means the professor id for tina's row will be 208 now here in anjali's row the professor id is 221 but in this column here in this primary key can you see any id to be 221 no no professor has the professor id 221 this is 208 this is 209 and this is 210 10 right so this 221 is an invalid value invalid value because that is not present in this primary key column here right and referential integrity constraint states that this foreign key column can either have values from the parent table or it is going to be none all right so this is referential integrity constraint where the parent table's primary key is used as the child table's foreign key and referential integrity constraint states that the child table's foreign key will only have values from parent table's primary key either it will have those values or the column will have null as values that is there'll be no value at all so let's say anjali has not been assigned any professor until now so we can keep this cell as empty right because we are allowed to have either null values or we are allowed to have values from this column all right in the foreign key right so referential integrity constraints are the limitations imposed on the foreign key all right these are not the limitations imposed on the primary key these are the limitations imposed on the foreign key and what are those limitations that the values are either going to be from the parent table's primary key or they are going to be null that's it 
Now the fourth integrity constraint is the key constraints. Key constraints is similar to entity integrity constraint. It states that there must be at least one column or one attribute that has unique values, right? So this we have already seen in the entity integrity constraint that there must be one primary key and we know that primary key is going to be unique at all times. But key constraint states that one table that is one entity can have multiple unique columns but there must be at least one unique column. There can be multiple also but it is mandatory that it has at least one unique column. Let's say here in this table staff ID is the primary key. If it is the primary key then of course it's going to be unique. All right but if you see here this pan number this is also unique right everyone in India has a different pan number because it is an identity proof so this number is going to be unique then passport number everyone has a unique passport number it cannot be repetitive for two people right so here we have one two and three unique columns so key constraint states that every relation must have at least one unique column which is the primary key but there can be multiple unique columns also and the rest of the unique columns are known as the candidate keys because they are the candidates to be the primary key so they are known as the candidate keys that is key constraints so that was all for integrity constraints and types of integrity constraints next video will be about the keys primary key candidate key foreign key etc and it's going to be a nice detailed explanation and uh, uh, if you haven't watched the previous video data models please watch that it's got detailed explanation of all the different types of data models that might be a part of your syllabus and uh, if you have any doubts any queries please feel free to write it in the comment section and if you have uh, maybe a suggestion or uh, something to say about my explanation my videos please write those also in the comment section below it really helps me to get better with every videos and um, uh, if you like this video if it helped you please give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and thank you so much for watching